Hey folks, Hank here, and you're watching the Northwest Forager. Now, this is a very exciting episode for me because I get to announce the release of my very first book, The Northwest Forager's Pocket Guide to Wild Edible Plants. In this episode, I'd like to take a little bit of time to explain how this book works as well as how you can attain your own copy. Also, I'd like you to meet my friend George. Later, perhaps all of us can go foraging for plants out of this book, see what we can cook up and eat. If this sounds like an episode that you're interested in watching, then stay tuned. I wanted to create something that was truly pocket size, which this measures three and a half by five inches. So it'll fit in your pant pocket, whether it's the side, back, front, or your shirt pocket. It has 26 of the Pacific Northwest, most common and easy to identify wild edible plants. And these are the same plants that can be found over many parts of the United States. And I wanted to arrange them in three different categories. The first being leafy vegetables, the next category would be your root vegetables. The third category would be fruit berries. Also important to note that each category has been listed in order according to its seasonal availability. You can get an idea of when these will be available. Of course this is relative and the other thing is I added is an elevation map because as some of you probably already know the higher up in elevation you go seasons start later for different plants. I decided to lay out two pages per each plant. The first page shows the plant in its natural growing environment. And of course you see it's listed by its common name as well as its scientific name and what family it belongs to. Also on this page describes the edible parts and to harvest those parts and it also talks about which habitat the plant grows in. This page notes which parts are edible as well as which parts can help you identify the plant. It also notes uh, any available nutritional information as well as how to prepare and cook. And so between these two pages, hopefully there's enough information where in a pinch you can not only identify a plant, but you can quickly know how to prepare it. In the back of the book, I have a small page for field notes, if you decide to take any based on your experiences, as well as the beginning of the poisonous lookalike section. I hope you guys are interested. If so, I'll provide a link down in the description, the first link will be to US Shoppers where you can purchase it off of my website, thenorthwestforager.com. If you live outside of the United States and you wish to purchase this, I will provide a link to eBay. Using this book, let's say we go out and find some things that we can forage. Okay. First one on the list, the Broadleaf Dock. Harvest when the leaves are still young and tender. Use in moderation for salads, soups, or stir fries. Listed as a root vegetable is burdock. Harvest choice roots from plants which have not yet bolted. Seems to fit the bill. Well, that was disappointing. Well, in hindsight, this is a lot easier with a shovel. But an axe did the trick. And now we have our burdock root. Raise your hand if you know dandelion. Okay, you can put your hand down. I would like to think that most people know this plant. 
But if you do, what you may not know is you can pretty much eat the entire thing. In fact, in this case, I'm going to dig up the root. And I'm going to eat up this part right here. Did I already mention this works much easier when you have a shovel? Well, we'll get it. Dandelion monster, yum 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 yum. What do we have here? We have cat's ear. A lot of people tend to get this plant confused with dandelion. But there are some differences to keep in mind. For example, these guys have fuzzy leaves on both sides, where dandelion doesn't have any fuzzy leaves at all. Also, if you take the little leaves like this and fold them, looks like you have some cat series. Shout out to you, rat and cat. Did I mention how much George likes cat ears? The yummy tree. Another one. Good boy. Oh, somebody's happy. These guys you may recognize as the narrow leaf plantain. Now in these, I'm gonna pick these little guys, the flowers, see what they taste like cooked up. Oh, are they in the book? That's a good question. Thank you for asking. Plantain. Well, yes, they are. And there's even the flower. Here we have the oxide daisy. Right now, it's still in its still in its vegetation stage. But there's some already out in the field that have gone to bloom. However, since we have just leaves, that's what we're going to collect. If you've never had Oxide Daisy before, these guys have such a unique, sweet flavor. This is definitely a treat, whether you cook it or eat it raw in a salad. I want to get some of this for our little stir fry. We have a little bit of dock, we have a little bit of bird dock, we have a little bit of cat's ear, a little bit of dandelion, a little bit of plantain, and some Oxide Daisy. There's burdock.
So I'm smelling mainly garlic because I put a lot of garlic powder in there with some salt and olive oil. It smells really good. First thing I want to try is the burdock root. So burdock root, if you find a good one, is really tasty. Good flavor. The burdock root really absorbs the garlic powder and the olive oil flavor. It has the crunch of a semi-cooked carrot. The flavor is unique on its own. It's very, um, it's kind of subtle, so it kind of takes on more of the other stuff around it. But if I were to compare it to anything, I would say close to kind of artichoke, or artichoke hurt. George agrees it's good. Now let's try the dandelion. That's definitely more bitter. Initially it had a good like butter, buttery flavor and instantly the butter or the bitter kicks in. Uh, apparently the battery or the memory card in my camera is full or done so it's not working anymore but I switched over to my phone to finish this video. So far I've tried the, the burdock root Try the dandelion root, which is a little more bitter than I like. Now I'm just going to try some of the greens. That's pretty good. I can taste the broadleaf dock because it's slightly sour, but it's not like make your eyes water sour. It's not like airheads or candy like that. It's just more of like a small zang. But I mean, the flavor goes really well with the, with the garlic. You can't eat cooked oil. Sorry, bud. Big bite. The bitterness is at an all time minimum. Which considering it's June, that's not too bad. Well, that does it for this video. Sorry I ran out of camera time. But, if there's nothing else for me to say, George, can you think of anything? Anything at all? He doesn't have anything to say. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this episode. If you're interested in attaining your own copy of The Pocket Guide, uh, feel free to check out the link down below. There's a number of ways you can purchase it. It's either through the website thenorthwestforager.com or if you're purchasing outside the US you can also go to the link to the eBay listing as well. So again thank you guys and uh, as always happy foraging. All right. Okay, George. <laughs> There's a number of ways you can purchase it.